Today we're going to talk about cheap vintage lenses and I've got all of the ones I've currently got to show you today and maybe even a couple more as well. I don't know how many there are, there's too many to count, but suffice to say, this is the cheap lens video to end all cheap lens videos and it's only just begun. Hello everybody, thanks for checking in again. So yes, today I'm going to show you all of the cheapy lenses that I've currently got and there are loads of them. We've got long lenses, we've got zooms, we've got 50 mils. There's just so many of them and they're all high quality lenses. Now, forget your misconceptions about what you might think cheap lenses are. Cheap lenses are cheap and we can certainly say that about them. But are they nasty? Are they less good than their fancy and more expensive counterparts? Well, for all intents and purposes, no, they're not. The lenses I'm going to show you today were made for high quality photo systems. Systems like the uh, former Soviet Union rangefinders, systems like the third party cameras, uh, SLRs that were made by Western manufacturers and sold, sold quite cheaply. All of those kinds of cameras were made for people who care about their photography. And so the lenses needed to be good and they were good. Perhaps they weren't quite made out of the same stunning materials that the more expensive ones were made out of. Perhaps they might show a tiny bit more softness in the corners, but really the difference between a fancy lens, an image from a fancy and an expensive lens, and an image from a cheap lens is, it, I mean, it's tiny, it's, it's details. You know, they say the devil is in the detail, and the more you pay for a lens, the, the tinier the improvements become. So you're really not going to see uh, any uh, real difference. In fact, I reckon if I did a taste test with a really expensive lens and a really cheap lens side by side shooting the same image, I wonder how many people will be able to taste the difference. I don't really know. I suspect a lot wouldn't. In fact, that might be a really interesting test to do. That might be an interesting video to do. Let me know if you'd like me to do that video in the comments below, please. So let's move. Oh, that was a pop. Let's move on to the lenses. And uh, well, let's have a look at 50 mils first, because that's, you know, that's the most uh, of any kind of lens I've got in my collection at the moment. And um, 50 mil lenses, I guess, were always the most common kind of lens. So there's more of them about. There was millions and millions of them made. And supply exceeds demand, you know. So they're still cheap. So let's begin with an example of uh, a lens from the former Soviet Union. This is the Indostar 50. This is... Uh, a very, very nice little lens indeed. I was out shooting it yesterday, actually, just because it's so lovely and the images that you get from it are just so nice. It's a really unpretentious lens as well. I mean, it, it's very ugly. Let me show you a bit more closely. I mean, look, I don't know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but that, to me, that's a really ugly lens it's got this sort of taper at the front and this bit is thinner than this bit and the proportions are not quite right so it truly is a hideous looking thing um but that doesn't matter that doesn't matter it's it really is something of an ugly duckling this lens is a bit of an ugly duckling and that is partly why i like it so much but mostly I like it so much because it's so cheap and it makes really fantastic images. It's a 53.5, so it's 50 mil f3.5 maximum aperture, um, which isn't very fast, but it will still make some nice 
blur is not going to make you a lot of blur. It won't make you as much blur as an f1.4, but how much blur do you really want? How much blur do you really need? Is blur overrated? Yes, it probably is. And the amount of time we use it is probably too much. But, you know, even so, having said that, this one will make you some nice blur. There's a collapsible version as well. Um, they go for a lot more. Um, these ones, the solid body ones, £10, £15. I mean, they're practically free. They're really, really cheap and they're a great lens. Very sharp. And I just love using them. And then, similarly, what else have we got in, in the FSUs? Well, we've got the Indostar. 61 this is a really nice better looking lens i'm glad to say this is a nice lens uh, a 50 mil f 2.8 so it opens up a little bit wider and it will give you just that little bit more blur it's a much nicer looking lens if we look closely at it there um bit of a zebra pattern going on there's the f 2.8 maximum aperture and i think these have think these have 10 blades yeah they do they have seven, eight, nine, ten. yeah they do they have 10 blades in their aperture mechanism i'm not sure how much the how many the Indostar 50 has and i don't think i'm i know it's on the front is it on the front no, that one's stuck. I didn't realise my Indostar 50 has got a stuck aperture. But never mind, that's even more reason to like it. So the Instar 61 is uh, an f2.8 version of uh, the FSU rangefinder lenses. These are rangefinder lenses, by the way. And like all rangefinder lenses, they'll focus down to three feet, a minimum focus distance. What else? Do we have? Well, we've got some SLR lenses somewhere. I think I've left half of them upstairs. Hold on a minute. Well, actually, I didn't leave half of them upstairs. I left one of them upstairs, and it's this one. This is the Helios 44 lens. And this is one of my favourite lenses. This is a copy of the Carl Zeiss Biotar of the 1930s. Now, I did have a Biotar, a 10-blade one from... I don't know, the 1950s sometime. I tested it against these Helios lenses and I found that the Helios lens actually came out on top. I actually preferred the, the look of the images from the Helios lens. So all things that glitter are not necessarily gold. This is a quite a nice looking lens. Um, this is, I think, a Belomo one, I think with the orange uh, yellow and red uh, green markings there. Uh, these are Belomo manufactured ones. The best ones to get are KMZ manufactured ones. Uh, those are the nicest that I've found. This lens will cost you around about 30 to 40 pounds, 50 pounds maybe if you're not lucky or you're not patient. Um, but <laughs> You know, this has become a very fashionable lens, a very well-known lens, because it gives swirl in the background blur, and a lot of people like it for that, but they're still not expensive. There were so many made that supply exceeds demand, and you just can't maintain high prices. So if anyone's asking high prices for one of these, move on to the next one, or, I don't know, make them a cheap offer, see if they go for it. But they're certainly not worth big bucks except for one of them, which is worth slightly bigger bucks, not big bucks, but slightly bigger bucks. And it's this one. And this is one of the early Helios 44 lenses. And this has a 13 blade. I don't suppose you'll be able to see it too clearly in there, but this one has a 13 blade aperture as opposed to the earlier eight blade aperture. And it's also made from this nice um, silver body here and it's also also got if we can just see it in the light there I don't know if you can see it it's got purple coatings and that's what we want in a lens so if the if this one is worth somewhere between 30 to 50 pounds this one 
a 13 blade version is worth anywhere between 80 to 100 pounds. They do go for 100 pounds, but the value of patience and persistence cannot be overemphasized because I bought this lens about a couple of years ago for 30 pounds. The guy just wanted 30 pounds for it. Nobody else bought it. It was sitting there on eBay. It was there a couple of days. Eventually I just snagged it. I thought, well, I'll have that. And it's been one of my favorite lenses ever since. Um, so patience and persistence pay off people. Don't just pull the trigger on the first lens you see. That ain't gonna cut the mustard, it ain't gonna work. It won't get you what you want. Be patient, be persistent, and the bargains are out there. Final FSU is another 50 mil. It's the Carl Zeiss Jena. Or rather, I don't know if this is quite an FSU lens. I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, exactly how the politics works at the time, but, it, you know, it's from East Germany, OK? It's from the old East Germany. Carl Zeiss Jena Tessar, 50 mil f2.8. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful lens. Very, very cheap. It will cost you about £20. It's got an M42 mount. They're often found on practica cameras like this one so if you find a nice one of these with a nice one of these you're in luck you're ready to go out shooting some film these practica cameras are good solid reliable machines and this cz j lens is a peach it's very sharp it's got uh, it's wide enough, it's got a wide enough aperture to get some nice blur. It's got a very close minimum focus distance of 35 centimetres, and that's a real bonus, that's a real boon, and that will help you get even more blur if that's what you want, or it'll help you get close to your subject if that's what you want. Really nice lens. What else? Ah, okay, here are two that we should look at, I think, or at least here's one that we should look at. And if I can find the other one, we'll be in business. Hold on a minute. Oh, there we are. Gosh, I'll have to clear these lenses all the way pretty quick before Mrs. Z gets home or there'll be a political situation, which we don't want. We don't want the Cuban Missile Crisis. However, we've got two lovely Western 50 mils here. One is an Olympus and one is a Pentax and they are demonstrative of the kind of lenses that you can buy if you don't want a, an FSU lens or if you've got plenty of FSU lenses. Um, well then, there are many, many um, Western made 50 mil lenses round about f2, f1.8 that are really nice and cheap and will give you fantastic images. The first one is this Pentax. I've talked about this lens before, but it's still a stunning, staggering, fantastic piece of glass for the price. It's an f2 55mm. Uh, sometimes it comes as an f1.8 55mm. It's exactly the same lens. So, um, you know, they're, they're the same. They've got the same optical performance. <clears throat> Uh, one opens up that little bit wider, if indeed it does, it may be just a case of markings. But these are beautiful, beautiful lenses. Look how smoothly that one turns after all these years. Just stunning. And they tend to be, uh, these Pentax lenses, the Takamars, the M42 mount Takamars. This is still on the adapter. But the M42 mount Takamars, are some of the finest lenses ever made, both optically and mechanically. These are reliable, solid lenses, and this one will cost you, gosh, what, about £30 if you're patient? These are really cheap, and this is one of the best value vintage lenses you can buy. So if you see one of these, if you're looking for a vintage 50, you see one of these, grab it. It will not lead you astray. We can also look at the Olympus and this the, this one is one of my all-time favourites. I do love Olympus kit. I think that's been established on this channel. 
before now. And I particularly love this little thing. Like all the Zuiko, OM Zuiko lenses, it's tiny. It's almost a pancake. This one's still got its pass sticker on it. Look how small it is when I take off the rear cap there. Still got the pass sticker on it. And this is one of the made in Japan versions. There were three, broadly speaking, three versions of these lenses. Silver nose, those were the earliest versions. They were single coated. Then the black nose multi coated. And finally, towards the final years of production, the black nose made in Japan. And you can see it says made in Japan there. And if you find a Zuiko lens that says made in Japan on it, they're said to be the nicest optically. And having compared them, they really are. Uh, but even the other ones are outstanding optics, just beautiful and available for 40 to 50 pounds. You'll, you'll often find them on, you know, OM. 30s om 40s that are not particularly popular and you can get them you know you buy the whole rig for about 20 to 30 pounds so then you get a camera as well but there's loads of other 50s i you know far too many for me to go into here's a miranda 50 mil f2 that i bought recently i paid 10 pounds for this lens and it makes really really gorgeous images it's in as new condition it's scarcely been used. And you know what? This is one of my favourite lenses. I do tend to like the underdogs, especially if they can come up with the goods like this one can. And it really does come up with the goods. Check out those colours. Check out the sharpness. This is a great little lens. You know, it's K-mount. It'll fit on any mirrorless camera and hundreds of film cameras. Just a lovely piece of kit for, you know, next to nothing. That's practically free. Similarly with another one I've got here, chin on F1.9 50 mil. Nice orange lettering on it there in the chin on style. I quite like the colors they use. They look pretty groovy. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. I had 12 things to say, and I've forgotten 11 of them. And the 12th one is that I had 12 things to say. Where does that leave us? Oh yeah, I remember, this is a beautiful little lens. It's an F1.9 50 mil, it's K mount, and it came with the chin on cameras. Again, this is a third party, a uh, lens from a, a, a less well-known manufacturer that sold at the cheaper end of the market. But it's a really nice lens. It's got plenty of metal in it and it gives beautiful images. So really what more could you want? And there are loads of lenses like this from all the major manufacturers. Ricoh, Canon, Konica, um, Minolta. You know, the list goes on and on. Everybody made a 51.8 and they're really, really cheap to buy. So if you want one, there's loads around. Grab one while you can, but don't pay more than, certainly don't pay more than 50 pounds for one. And I would suggest don't pay more than 40 pounds for one either. Right, fancy a cheap 1.4, but feel that the prices have overtaken you? Well, they may not have because I bought this lens a couple of years ago for 30 pounds. This is, what is this? This is a Minolta Auto Rocco PF 58 mil 1.4. How about that? An F 1.4 lens for 30 pounds. Again, it was just sitting on eBay there. And why nobody wanted it? I, I just cannot imagine. Maybe it's because it was an older lens. I don't know. But it's a lovely lens. I don't know of any better lens than this one for colour representation, actually. It really makes colours pop. Just a lovely thing. It's a little soft, wide open, but then all vintage lenses are, uh, all vintage 1.4s rather, are a little soft, wide open. I don't know of one that isn't, except perhaps from the Canon FD. 
And that's more of a modern lens. That's got more of a modern rendering, even though it's uh, in a vintage manual focus body. Most 51.4s of the vintage variety are going to get a bit soft wide open and this one's no exception but stop it down to f2 and it really starts to behave itself and sharpen up and um you know it'll give you some really beautiful images i have seen these advertised at 80 to 100 pounds but i bought this for 30 so it just demonstrates that patience pays off be patient be persistent and you know, the bargains really are out there. Right, if you want a nice, cheap, longer lens, then you could do a lot worse than one of these two or one of the similar ones from any of the other manufacturers. So what we've got is a Pentax 135, <coughs> excuse me, a Pentax 135 F 3.5. This is a delicious lens is absolutely beautiful thing and like all the takamas it's exquisitely made as well some of these takamas and this is one such give very delicate kind of pastely colors and it's a really unique color palette i've not seen um colors really similar to that it's it's really is a pentax signature look it's a very beautiful look you get plenty of saturation but you also get this pastely feel to your shots and i think it makes for some really nice images this one is as good as the day it was made uh, i can't feel any sloppiness or stickiness in that focusing mechanism so everything's working nicely mechanically and it's very nice optically as well difficult to know what i paid for this lens because i bought it a couple of years ago with a pentax 50 mil macro f4 that's the uh, one to two macro so not a true macro plus another one i got another one with it, another takama with it as well i think it was a 51 point or 55 1.8 so what did this cost me about 30 pounds or thereabouts if you divide it up into three these are available on their own for that price 30 to 40 pounds as indeed are these this is the olympus om zuiko version of the same thing this is a beautiful lens it's a little smaller so eco lenses tend to be that bit smaller than other lenses but this is a really gorgeous thing i mean this is one of my favorites actually this is eco let me put this one down and this is one of my favorites it's got a little built-in hood there that just sort of snicks out if you want a little bit of hood action if the light's a bit too bright it's very, very, very nice in use. It's lovely and smooth. Everything's still in good condition. And I think they're slightly better looking lenses than the Pentax ones as well. Pentax ones are all black, but you know, that doesn't matter. That's just a detail and personal preference. Every manufacturer made a 135 F 3.5 mil lens because every amateur photographer back in the day who was worth his salt and considered himself to have any claim to being serious, had three lenses at least, a 51.8, a 28, 2.8 or 3.5 and a 135, 3.5. So there are millions of these things about from all the major manufacturers. Carl Zeiss Jena, they're lovely and cheap. Um, Konica, they're cheap ones. Minolta, those are lovely cheap ones also so if you want a nice long lens you want to do some portraits you want to get some nifty background blur going on you want to blur out the world as though it doesn't exist anymore get yourself one of these uh, a, a long lens a 135 lens from one of the major manufacturers and you will not go far wrong very very nice lenses indeed okay shall we have a look at some zooms Go on then, 
Right, I did do an episode on Zooms fairly recently, so I won't spend too much time on them right now, except to say that you can get some really fantastic ones. Some nice kit Zooms were made. They tend to be a little slower than many of their um, more expensive counterparts, but that's all right because how much blur do you need? Many of them go quite close, so they'll make blur at, at, at close distances. They're all high quality. They're all top quality glass and coatings, and they're really nice. I mean, this one, for example, is a Sigma Zoom Master f2.8 to f4, 35 to 70. So a really, really nice little lens, a push-pull lens, but beautiful little tiny thing. Take it around with you all day. 25 to 70 covers all the focal lengths that you might need. Just fantastic. What else have we got? Oh, we've got another Sigma Zoom Master. This is the 3.5 to 4.5, 35 to 70. So this must be this must be the um, less expensive equivalent to the one that we've just looked at. But that's a nice lens as well. I've made some nice images with this one. Oh, again, a tiny lens. This one, an absolutely tiny lens, even smaller than the one we just looked at. So a really nice bit of kit. What else we got? Well, we've got, oh, look at this. We've got the Nikon 43 to 86 once said to be the worst lens in the world and certainly the worst Nikon lens. Though in fairness, this is version two. Version one was supposed to be the horrible one. This is version two. It's a 43 to 86 mil constant aperture f3.5. That's quite a nice touch. I do like a constant aperture on a zoom. It's a push pull. It's got Nikon's colour signature. It makes some nice blur and it's sharp, wide open. A really nice lens. Yours for 40 to 50 pounds. The previous ones we looked at, I should have mentioned those prices of those. Uh, I paid from memory. I paid 30 pounds each for those. So pretty cheap optics. This one's pretty cheap as well for what it is. What else have we got? Well, oh, look, we've got this fantastic. This was a real find. This is a Miranda 70 to 210. Yeah, it's a 70 to 210 millimeter, 4.5 to 5.6. It says macro on it, but I don't think it's a macro lens. This I bought recently for about 15 pounds. It was in its box hardly ever been used. I think even the push-pull mechanism will sustain, or no, it won't quite sustain standing at the top and not coming down under its own weight. But, oh, there he goes. But it took a while to get there. So this one's in really nice order and it's going to stay pretty much where you put it unless you're standing it right up against the sky. And then you're going to have the problem of collapsing <laughs> like that one does but there we are this was a really cheap lens and I made some really nice images with it and I do like the coloured markings that Miranda used around that time I think a bit of colour on lenses really jazzes them up a little bit and I kind of like that a beautiful lens yours for around 10 to 15 pounds should you so wish and there are many, many others by Vivitar, Cosina. Um, gosh, lots of other third party manufacturers and they all made really cheap zoom lenses and they're all still out there. All many, 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 many of them are still out there and they're all still cheap. So pretty good. Couple of oddities that I've left to last, this is an oddity. This is the Meyer Optic Gorlitz Lidith 3.5, uh, F3.5 30mm. This is a nice little lens. It's said to have, I think this is the one with the soap bubble bokeh in the background. Beautiful little thing. And if you put this on an APS-C camera, you get uh, a 
about a 40 millimeter focal length an effective note that word effective again an effective 40 millimeter focal length and that is my favorite focal length so this lives on the front of my xt3 for you know my sort of walk around kit i love this lens on the front of my fujifilm xt3 that gives me about 40 mil that's my favorite walk around focal length just absolutely a lovely bit of kit i bought this recently for 20 pounds it was cheaper than the m42 versions because this is an exacta bayonet mount i don't know why the exacta mounts versions are cheaper but they are and it goes on to any mirrorless camera just the same as an m42 version so a great little piece of kit Oh, look, I missed out a Vivitar 50mm f1.8. There it is, just so that we can see it. What else have we got? Oh, look, we've got this. Now, this is a lens that, I mean, it's just a real oddity. And why I've kept hold of it, I really don't know. Well, I do know. I've kept hold of it because it's lovely. It's a delightful little thing. It's a CCTV lens from the old times, from back in the day. Check that out. Isn't that a beautiful thing? The quality of this thing is astonishing. And it's an f1.4 maximum aperture. And uh, I, I just think that's fantastic. A tiny little lens, beautifully made. It's no use for full frame, of course. It's no use for APS-C. It won't cover the image circle. And guess what? It's no use for micro four thirds either, unless you shoot in the square format. So I sometimes stick this on the front of my GH2 and go for a little walk and get some square shots. It's a C-mount lens. There are lots of C-mount lenses that will cover the image circle of a micro four thirds camera. This is one that won't. Um, but as I say, you can make square images with it. Otherwise, you get loads and loads of vignetting. This one cost me £10. They're not in demand. They're not particularly popular. So if you find a C-mount lens, great for your micro four thirds kit. So there we are. Loads and loads of cheapies to keep you happily in lenses for your mirrorless camera or for your film camera pretty much for as long as you like. Look after them and they'll look after you. Be patient. Don't buy the first one you see. Look around. Keep a few on your watch list and get to know the prices and what, so that when you find a cheap one, you can just jump in there and push that button. So that's about it from me for this week. Thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Many thanks to subscribers and many thanks to patrons too. Without the patrons, we could not do what we do on this channel. Patrons is what makes this channel possible. So if you like the content on the channel and you would like to support us, please consider becoming a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash xenography so that's it from me for now thanks for watching and i'll see you next time for some more xenography cheerio all